What's going on guys? Balkan Architecture and in today's video I'm going to be talking about LOD or levels of development in the world of BIM or building information modeling. Now before I get into this really important topic that doesn't nearly get mentioned as much as it should, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make three useful Revit tutorials every week. And one more thing before we get into this really important topic, uh, that BIM girl, not that BIM girl, the that BIM girl that I visited the last summer in Germany, well, she surprised me and she gave me a surprise present for reaching 100,000 subscribers. And thank you so much, by the way, for helping me achieve this amazing goal. Now, if you want to see that video and if you want to see what she got me, I suggest you check out her video. I'm going to be leaving a link somewhere in the description, so check that out. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into LOD or level of development. Now, level of development or LOD, which is not to be confused with level of detail, which is a completely different term that might be a bit confusing because level of detail is a term from the 70s that was used with one of those like early 3D models and they use the term level of detail to basically say when something is kind of further away, when you zoom out you get less detail and when you zoom in you get more detail so you don't uh, kind of over constrain your computer when uh, working with 3D models. But LOD or level of development is a completely different term that actually relates to BIM or building information modeling. And it was coined in 2013 when a bunch of important people got together and they decided that uh, in the world of BIM we really need a reliable specific way of determining at which stage of design and development a certain BIM model is. And we need to find kind of a way to classify or categorize those kind of different levels of development. So they decided to call it level of development or LOD for short. And they got six classifications. So they all start with LOD, short for level of development. And we've got LOD 100, LOD 200, LOD 300, LOD 350, LOD 400, and finally LOD 500. Now to explain how does this classification work and how it might apply to something that you're doing, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to run through all of the basically to all of the short and quick definitions for each of this, these kind of levels of development. And then I'm going to be showing you on a specific and like a concrete uh, example in on, on a real model, how these levels of development might apply. So how many elements and which elements you need to have to have your level of development. And one more really important thing, these classifications for levels of development are not only referring to your geometrical information, but also your non-geometrical information. All of the information that is contained within the geometry that is not actually geometry itself. So let's first go through all of the definitions. So LOD 100 is also called conceptual design and this is the building 3D model is developed to represent the information on a basic level, thereby only conceptual model creation is possible in this stage. Parameters like area, height, volume, location and orientation are defined. Next moving on to LOD 200 and this is called schematic design. This is a general model where elements are modeled with basically uh, approximate uh, quantities, size, shape, location and orientation. We can also attach, we can also attach non-geometrical information to these model elements. Moving on to LOD 300 and detailed design. This is an accurate modeling and shop drawings where elements are defined with specific assemblies, precise quantity, size, shape, location and orientation. Here too, we can attach non-geometric information to the model elements. Moving on to LOD 350, also known as construction documentation, and it includes model detail elements that represent how model elements interface with various systems and other building elements with uh, ge geographics within definitions. Moving on to LOD 400, which is defined as fabrication and assembly, 
where model elements are modeled as specific assemblies with complete fabrication, assembly, and detailing information, in addition to precise quantity, size, shape, location, and orientation. Non-geometric information to the model elements can also be attached. And finally, LOD 500 as built, which is kind of an as built model. Here we have elements modeled as construction assemblies for maintenance and operation, in addition to actual and accurate in size, shape, location, quantity, and orientation. Non geometric information is attached to model elements. So, here, as you saw there, we've basically got some definitions for each model element and how does that work but let's now see on an actual kind of example concrete example how does this work in real life so for that i thought we might take some foundation elements and see how many foundation elements we need at each of these lod's or levels of development so let's see now for this i'm going to be looking at this pdf that they have from a bim forum for lod for 2000 uh, 18 this is kind of a classification for each building element and how it corresponds to each LOD classification now if you want to get this information this PDF as well as that image from which I was reading all of those uh, definitions for uh, levels of development I'm going to be linking them up on my patreon first link in the description and don't worry it's free you don't have to pay I'm just going to be attaching it as a regular file and even non-patrons can access it and you can go there and download it and maybe just maybe if you want to get some or all of my Revit models you may become a uh, you may subscribe to the Balkan Architect premium member and you get access to all of my Revit project files and if you want to get access to some of my advanced Revit courses that are each over an hour long you may want to subscribe to Balkan Architect Advanced Courses. And if you don't want any of that, you can just go ahead and download these files for free. Okay, so let's go and let's see how, does the, the, how do these levels of development apply to foundation. So looking at this PDF, so I'm looking at this page 18. Yeah, so at page 18, we've got these kind of foundation and as you can see for level of development at 100 LOD 100 we basically have no information so at LOD 100 you don't really have to have any inf information for your foundation next we've got some an image for LOD 200 where it looks like we've only got this kind of foundation wall and it says over here image notes generic wall foundation is modeled site is uh, generically modeled from geometrical information and uh, geotechnical report so that's all you get moving on to LOD 300 here as you can see just looking at this image we've got way more modeling information or way more geometry but then also here for element modeling to include we've got in the description also overall size and geometry of the foundation element sloping surfaces external dimensions of the membranes also geotechnical bearing uh, as strata elevation is modeled from geotechnical report also area of bearing influence modeled or accommodated by model sketching software moving on to LOD 350 here as you can see we've got way more information than in the previous one and also in here in the notes we've got element modeling to include a location of sleeve penetrations also uh, poor joints chamfer moisture retarder also dowels all exposed embeds or reinforcements such as lintels also expansion joints geotechnical bearing strata is modeled from geotechnical report estimates and moving on to lod 400 here as you can see we've only got some uh, some notes no image in this one so element modeling to include rebar including hooks and lap uh, splices dowels uh, <laughs> crushing for unit masonry defined and waterproofing and that's pretty much it we don't have anything for LOD 500 so me that means it's pretty much the same for LOD 500 as it was for LOD uh, 400 okay so 
that's how it looks in real life just looking at one element or one model element that's how it goes through all of those classifications so just looking at that you can notice that not each classification has its own little add-in some maybe don't some maybe do it just depends on which which building element we're talking about okay so i hope i have explained this topic on LOD or, or level of development a bit to you. I think uh, this is really important to know, especially if you're looking for a job and you want to present yourself as an expert BIM user or Revit user. You want to know these things. These terms are really important. People might ask you, which is the farthest LOD you have worked on some project? So you might want to go through all of your previous projects, even though you maybe didn't define LOD or level of development so you might know to say okay I, I, I've gotten projects to LOD 400 that's like the max that I've done so far or something like that so this is really some I guess uh, industry lingo that you must know if you want to participate in this building industry and in BIM industry overall okay so that's pretty much it for this explanation I guess or demonstration of LOD or levels of development. All of these uh, information, all of these files you can get by going to my Patreon. Again, as I said, link is in the description. Just look down there. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or maybe suggestions for maybe other videos with topics like this where I explain maybe some, uh, some topics within the world of BIM that are not maybe that well known, or just some regular Revit tutorials, again, leave it in the, in the comment section below. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in a couple of days with another useful tutorial. Bye.